So hello, welcome to uh, the next issue of Flying Scotsman. Um, we're doing the, the cab floor today and um, it's a nice issue. It's not anything we haven't done. A little bit of bending, um, a little bit of gluing and that's basically it. Um, it's a nice little issue but it's added nice detail. Let's see how I got on. So hello, welcome to uh, stage nine of Build a Flying Scotsman. And uh, as always, let's begin with a parts check. Uh, so we have got this issue, uh, another sprue, uh, and we have got uh, thir uh, number 30, which is the cab floor. And you see there, there'll be some bending to do. And 31, we have the, uh, the full plate which is this one there will be a slight bit of bending to do on there let me just adjust the lighting and 32 we have this beautiful uh, detail to see it's got this wood effect on it I can't get the focus in today um, and part 33 we have two screws which I'm not going to take out of the bag um, because it doesn't look like we'll be using these uh, in fact it does actually say in the magazine uh, set aside the two self tapping screws part 33 and put them in a safe place these will be used later in the models construction to secure the rear frame to the foot plate okay so what because has become quite usual now is that we will be cutting the pieces off the sprues uh, off the fret sorry uh, we'll tidy those up and I will then meet you at stage uh, four. Okay, so stage four, it says to place the uh, cab floor part 30, which is this piece here. Um, on a flat surface with the etched fold lines facing upwards so that's these here uh, using a metal ruler as a guide gently score along the fold lines with a needle file this will make it easier to bend the, the edges of this part so bit of a confession I'm not going to do that um, the reason being is that my photo etch bender will pretty much do that for me um, so yeah i'm going to skip that stage but if you don't have a photo etch bender then yeah obviously just run uh all you need to do is with a metal obviously get a metal ruler and you'll just run a sharp edge through there okay so stage five using the, the long the, the long round nose pliers bend up one of the edges by 90 degrees repeat for the other edge so again i'm not going to do that with with the uh, pliers i'm actually going to be doing that with a photo etch bender and there's going to be a few pieces there uh, quite long so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to just move my photo etch bender round so that i'm dealing with this space here and i will line that up i get it roughly lined up and then just tighten slightly i actually need to work this way because this is where I'm bending and then we can just do our fine adjustments lock that into place and I don't yeah, I didn't need to use that right so I've actually bent that too much it's not a major problem because all I'll do is I'll just tighten it into place again and that should help to flatten it so lock that down and then using our our little razor blade we're just going to pop that into there but i'm going to use two blades so be very careful when handling razor blades because they are extremely sharp 
they do cut very quickly and um, you could find yourself with a deep cut before you've even realized what's happened right so I've got that started and we want that bent to roughly a 90 degree angle and then we need to repeat for the other edge are we happy with that angle yeah I think I am so we just look down it so that will tell the story yeah if it's not spot on it's not not out by an awful lot now this side because actually I might be able to get away with doing it on there yeah because it's so big I'm going to poke it through from behind this will give us a lot more control on on the bender and you see there I've just got the uh, the the etched edges just sticking out ever so slightly and what that will do is just encourage it to bend along that line obviously it's so much easier when it's got an etched line so that you've got a guideline and also something I've often said is force, light, sound, anything like that they're all quite lazy and they try to travel in straight lines along the path of least resistance so even if you got that slightly out it'd still bend uh, on the on the etch line because it's actually created a weak point right so that is stage five complete and we've bent both edges so step six check that the bends are accurate and when you are happy with them use the miniature flat nose pliers to bend the outer edges of the rear fold 90 degrees inwards so again I'm not using the pliers in fact actually I might just use pliers because pliers might be the simpler simpler thing in this particular case um, now I do have round nose pliers but I wanted to use the flat ones um, and equally I can use these these are a very poor metal cutting um, uh, side cutters for metal um, but they're quite blunt and they're quite hard work so I think these will be perfect because they've got a bit of a point what we can do is just if you run your your pliers you can feel that line and then just gently grip it not trying to cut it we can then just encourage that bend and then as it starts to bend we can just further up we can just tease that across I don't want to do this too quickly because I feel that if I do it too quickly it could actually snap it off okay and to do that again we're just going to run our pliers along until we can feel that bend then start to bring the pliers closed not not closing them hard but we can now just encourage that bend and there we are and that's not quite 40 degrees uh, 50, 90 degrees even and there we go and that's just nice simple easy bend of course now that this end is bent it will encourage it'll act as a stopper for this so it can't go more than 90 degrees and there we go okay so I've skipped step 7 because that's a, a showy stage rather than a dewy stage and on to step eight using the miniature flat nose pliers bend both the location tabs on the full plate up to 90 degrees so that's this bit now this is a small and fiddly part and we're going to do this exactly the same way we did before we're going to feel that bend uh, feel that little etched line and we're just going to gently tease it just like that ever so simple and then we can actually finish that off on the table in a moment but this particular one I can't because this one is is a different length so we will just tease that on and you could equally do this with, with flat nose pliers or flat pliers but I'm quite liking this pointy end so now that we've got two of them started we could just finish that off on the table and I'm, I'm applying a bit of pressure with fingernails where the actual bend is 
to try and keep that flat on the table and you see I'm not quite there yet that one's just about there as is that one so there we go that I'm happy with so a little bit of etching a photo of uh, uh, brass bending there okay so stage nine is to key the top surface of the cab floor ready for fixing the cab floor detail with adhesive and that's this piece here the piece that we've already bent and all we need to do to key that up is give it a rub over with a fine sandpaper or in this case an emery board and we just want to what the keying up is going to do is it's just going to rough the surface a little bit just to give it a little bit more surface area to um, to stick and I think I've done a demo before um, but I will do again in a moment there we go that's keyed up now because this is an old part work what actually works to my advantage is over time this brass has tarnished and it may actually have been tarnished even with it being a brand new part work but um, I know it's keyed up when the colour changes back to its natural brass so the reason we key up is if you have two completely flat surfaces you apply a bit of glue they've still got that movement there what you're actually doing when you key up you're making it rough so if you imagine on a more microscopic level these are going to be the surfaces so you apply the glue and then the glue goes in like that and it's a lot harder to to separate so that's why we've done that okay so confession I am a little bit confused by this stage I have looked at the magazine many many times um, obviously I read through the magazine before I start the build to prepare myself and I don't get this bit how it's going to work so we'll give it a go uh, so we place the tabs on the full plate into the slots in the cab floor and adjust if necessary make sure the full plate is free to move so the magazine looks something like that the orientation and then we're bringing the full plate in there and that is actually really simple <laughs> so what we've done there is we've let me see if I can get that out so <coughs> let me have a quick look at a, a forward issue a forward right so what we're ending up with is something like that So we have these little cutouts there and obviously we bent these up and that's going to they're just simply going to go into there like so um, now I think that is the way it's meant to go but it doesn't say anything about gluing this on nothing whatsoever which is what's making it me confused um, so let's yeah let's have a look and we'll see how we get on we'll see how the part obviously reading the magazine is different from feeling the part so um, that might make the difference okay so stage 11 apply some super glue to the cab floor place the cab floor detail part 32 on the cab floor making sure it lines up with the uh, outer edges so we've keyed this up it doesn't say anything about keying this end edge up so I'm just going to give that a quick uh, a quick one so it just removes any dirt and debris and uh, you probably don't need to key up both edges but by all means leave a comment and tell me whether I'm doing a good thing by keying this up a bad thing or if it doesn't really matter either way there we go so I believe this is going on like this and now this makes perfect sense so what's going to happen is in the previous stage we've popped this in and it doesn't say anything about gluing and that was my concern because look 
that can fall out quite easily um, I did see this part which had these little cutouts um, but this is genuinely the first time I've done a dry fit now as you as you glue that on what actually happens can you see that those bits on the end there are longer than the floor so it will actually hold it in as you can see but it will leave it free to move now the question that I have is what kind of glue to use um, it says in the magazine super glue which it does all the way from the beginning um, I don't think there's going to be an awful lot of pressure on this particular plate um, and I need to apply the glue quite carefully because I want to make sure I don't catch those little I'm going to call them hinges um, and a quick drying glue will not give me an awful lot of time a slower drying glue such as epoxy will give me lots of working time but then I need to clamp it so I think I'm going to go with this cheap and cheerful super glue that I got from the uh, from the local convenience store um, I really should have got it from the, the pound shop or the dollar store depending on where you live um, but I think that that will be sufficient um, so as you see I've not used it yet um, so I just need to I do like these they usually come with a little pointy cap and that's how you open it and as you see these glues are an absolute mess um, because they're so runny um, I, I pretty much refer to these as single use glues because by the time you've um, finished with it and all you've made loads of mess and um, the glue's dried you probably won't use that again right so what I'm going to do here I'm going to apply the majority of the glue to this plate to about there then I'm going to just apply a couple of dots along the edge there just to avoid that um, uh, that hinge and perhaps I should have applied drip the glue onto the actual plate but what I am keen to do is to uh, keep this glue as, as thin as I possibly can and I am aware that this, this is quite a fast drying glue and what I'm desperately desperately trying to avoid is squeeze out and the best way to avoid squeeze out is to not put much on at all so let's see how this goes I mean this is I believe this is a contact glue um, so obviously it will evaporate into the air if you don't put anything on it but it tends to dry once it makes contact with the surface and that I am actually really happy with very very happy with that so this moves freely and this is stuck down if I give it a little bit of a lift yeah that's not coming off and it was explained to me by a good friend or someone I now regard as a very good friend um, that the way super glue works is as a contact glue it's actually rather strong um, what it lacks is the shear strength so if you need to remove something with super glue you twist it um, the reason I'm using weak super glue for this is because by the time this goes into the cab there'll be sides and front on it there's no opportunity to, to give it the shear strength the, the actual shear movement um, and there won't be anything lifting that up having said that I've just found a small area that I've missed this is why I like to keep, keep checking things so what I'm going to do I want to just open this up just a tiny bit and then I can just get my cocktail stick in there run it in there and then there we go 
I have got a little bit of squeeze out on there um, but it's all come out on the edges and that's perfect very very happy with that so moving moving plate there that works absolutely fine sorry guys I can't stop this because my mouse has stopped working okay so for step 12 you'll notice that I brought the uh, the um, cab through and all we need to do in step 12 is just check the fit and this is going to go into there like so and that is rather a tight fit so that could be because of the squeeze out on the epoxy in the corners there it is so that's that's actually the dry fit there that's really good so now I've got a cab floor so let's see if I can just check any damage I might have done pushing that in so that's a really tight fit so I'm not going to wrench that out what I am going to do is just to get a little knife in there and we'll just lift that out gently this is the problem with the test fits sometimes they're a really tight fit and you can't get them out again in order to glue them so where the problem areas are for getting is is just around this bit here and I see actually some beadings come on done so I'll, I'll look at that later okay so stage 13 is to key the leading edges to be glued using a fine grade sandpaper so what they mean by that is this is the leading edges here this is where the main sticking point is going to be so we just look at how they fit and I can actually see that when I took this off the sprue I missed a little bit there so we just need to make sure that's flattened so this goes to show that no matter how well you think you do something you may still miss parts so there we go I'm happy with that and then obviously what we want to do is we want to just key this bit up and flatten it make sure it's all okay right and then we will uh, lead into stage 14 so stage 14 is to apply some glue onto there before pressing home the floor assembly um, so I think the way I'm going to tackle this is I'm going to pop this floor assembly back in make sure it's check it again we have just been sanding and I can see that that is a good fit so then I'm going to just lift that floor assembly up a little bit and then that will give us the space we need to just apply some glue along this line and the problem with this is such a thin little piece of brass I actually can't see if I've popped any uh, any glue on or even enough so fairly quickly I want to press that home and you may want to consider just popping some masking tape on there as well but I can tell there's some glue on there and that's because my fingers just stuck to it I think that's okay if that doesn't work no, it's not working right okay not a problem so what we'll do is we'll just give that a quick clean up just to remove the glue that I have put on and uh, we'll just apply a stronger glue so let's turn to my super glue gel um, this is um, the reason I think that that other glue isn't working is um, is because it's because of the shape of the parts they're probably not actually filed perfectly and I've just noticed something actually and I didn't notice this before um, there's a little gap in there as well so you need to make sure that this part goes fully home as well um, so I may not have got the part in and that was putting a bit of pressure on, on the on the glue 
so I think what we'll do is yeah that goes home absolutely fine so we'll just lift this up slightly we'll reapply the glue but this time we'll, we'll apply super glue gel and I think also if we double check that the uh, the tab at the back is fully home then I think that that will be a little bit easier stronger glue and more checks so there we go one two three four this is going to be ever so slightly messy for me because I've got a bit of glue coming out but that looks much better and I think I'm just gonna um, I will just pop a bit of masking tape on there just to help to hold that home and all we want to do is just pop masking tape that's too wide on the front we want to push that down fully and then just pull that masking tape back like so and I think that will hold that in place and we probably only want that there for about five minutes um, but we can actually get on with the next stage um, which is to continue gluing this down okay so the last makey stage of this bit uh, this particular stage uh, what we want to do is run some super glue down into the corner there and then that will just help stick that down now I think you really do want to be using thin glue here because what will happen is the capillary action it will just drip into those edges and all we're going to do is not applying much we're going to take our super glue we're just going to run a little bit tiny bit into there and then what I'd like to do is just run my cocktail stick into there and then we'll just pull the side out slightly and you can see that the majority of that glue is actually run down underneath the floor and just give that a few seconds and then we'll repeat on the other side this is one of the great things um, about the cheap thin super glue is the fact that it runs into all of the corners um, you know you might get people go oh don't use that cheap super glue it's no good actually it is really good in some situations right so now that I've run that into the edges I'm just going to push these sides together and just for good measure I'm going to get a piece of masking tape and I'm going to start from the bottom pulling it quite hard on the side and I'm then going to pull it fairly hard and then that should pull those sides together and again we probably only want to leave that for five minutes okay so I've left that for about five ten minutes and what I'll do now is I'll just pull the masking tape off um, which doesn't want to come off my finger and we will undo this and straight away these tops have sprung out and let's just have a look I think that's fine I think that's absolutely superb so I'm just I'm not using this as a file I'm just running that long there's a little bit of cloudiness down there where the glue is drying um, but that's not going to be a problem because this is going to get filed and painted at a later stage so there we go guys we now have a cab floor um, I've got to be honest with you I don't understand what that is for I think and I might be wrong here where you have the coal tender I think the coal tender comes to about there and there'll be a gap and there has to be a gap because obviously as you've got two square objects as they go around the track they're going to move and I think that this particular part here just covers that gap um, but it can't actually be permanent because obviously as the tender is is is, is bouncing and, and this is going to be moving that's just a guess based on what I know about objects moving on on a track but um, but there that's a nice little touch 
um, and obviously with that part being a moving part this is my first moving part I believe of the whole build um, and it's such a simple part but it's it means that obviously if I put motors and things in this I could use this on an actual track um, so yeah that's the end of issue 9 happy with that stage um, as you know this is um, this is pushing my hobby skills uh, in a new direction uh, and a little bit slightly out of my comfort zone um, which I'm more than happy to do and I think I'm doing okay I'm not unhappy um, I know you expert modelers out there might be looking and going actually that's not very good um, but I also hope that in addition to saying it's not very good uh, and that I don't have great skills you're also saying I'm giving it a go and my skills are improving with each stage um, so I will leave you there guys um, I should have brought out the uh, yeah I have already brought the complete stage up uh, and I hope that you agree this looks like something like what the magazine says it should look like take care guys I will see you in the next issue uh, which will be issue 10 and that will be window frames cab doors and cinder guards take care <laughs>